work who just seems to constantly be in suffering. Uh, maybe it's an addiction. Uh, maybe it's emotional or physical abuse. Maybe it's uh, uh, one of the worst addictions that anybody can be in to drama. Drama. You know what I mean when I say that? I know you're shaking your head out there. You're going, oh man, boy, boy, I've got that, I've got that person in my life that's all about drama. We're going to talk a little bit about that drama today. And we talk about all these things on this show with the idea that we're going to speak to you on how maybe you can help them. We're kind of an instructional show in that way, and we're Christ-centered. And so we're not always talking to the person who's suffering. Sometimes we're talking to the person who is enabling. And I resemble that remark. So I, I, I don't speak from a, a place of uh, judgment. I speak from a place that I'm in the choir singing with you. Uh, my special co-host today is uh, Mary, and she's been with us the last few weeks, and we appreciate when she comes back. Uh, she is a part of the 12-step program, 31 years? Yes. And uh, she loves the anonymous part. So if you're watching this program at webcast one Live dot com or at restoring hope dot com you won't see the visual of mary but you'll hear her lovely voice and of course bob monster at the cat in the hat watching the chat and if you go on our website you can click chat and bob is monitoring a live chat and so maybe you're able to call in and share with us maybe you're able to uh, just share with bob but we'll repeat that we do have a call-in number and i would like to hear your voice today uh 1-855-244-0077 and uh the question is how do you as a Christian, how are you as a Christian when it comes to tolerance? Uh, one of my favorite uh, Macisms is uh, tolerance uh, is a man with no convictions. And I know that's not completely true. I know that's not a black and white issue, but it feels that way for us sometimes, doesn't it? When we're tolerant uh, of that neighbor that Jesus teaches us to love, but that neighbor is just doing everything. I mean, we, we just want to we just want to hug them too hard until they squeal because we want them to know that they're not walking in steps with Jesus. But is that our job? I don't know. That's the question at hand. And I'd love to hear from you. one 855 7 Now, we had, Bob, we had Pastor Ernest in uh, the show the other day, and he made an interesting point. That the word tolerance, and Mary, I don't know if you know this, is not in the Bible. The word tolerance, or its Greek suffix, or anything like that, is not in the Bible. Now, Bob, what do you think that fact means? Does that mean anything? I mean, neither is, uh, neither is uh, um, texting while driving is in the Bible, and neither is uh, how much fast food you should you eat until you're a glutton. So the fact that it's not there doesn't mean that we need to ignore it, but... Right, I think uh, you have to consider that not all terms that we use today were used back then either, and so there are other ways the Bible can reveal uh, concepts and ideas without using specific words that we use today. Because certainly Jesus taught tolerance. Sure. Didn't he? Yes. What word would he have used? Patience? Non judgmental? Or how about uh, he who is without sin cast the first stone? Aha. Very good. So we're tolerant of that sin, is what that parable should teach us. Be tolerant of the sin because you are not without it yourself. Well, we're, none of us are sin free. So if we point the finger at someone because we say, okay, you're sinning in that way, what about the finger that's pointing back to you, and what about revealing your own sin? And so what, I guess what I'm saying is that's being a, a judging a person based on where you are and what you think is right. But uh, no one, what about the finger that's pointing to you, like I said before? Yeah. You know, what is your sin? You, no one is sin-free. So, so how are you going to, you know, I'm trying to think of uh, a specific uh, tolerance situation. Did you have any one in mind? I mean, are you thinking of big sins? You oh, know, I'm, or I'm, I'm I'm thinking, you know, I'm a I'm a recovering alcoholic, and I just love to judge everybody. I mean, I'm I'm intolerant of most things by nature. Well, but by nature, no, by the nature of my alcoholism. 
But God probably teaches us to be very tolerant. Okay, so you're saying you're intolerant for other people that are alcoholics? Is that what you're saying? I mean, you're... No, 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 So no. What am I intolerant of? Right. I am intolerant. What am I intolerant of? Oh, you're going to convict me here, Robert. Well, I'm not trying to. I know you're not. Uh, Jump in here anytime and well, save me, Mary. I, well, I was, you know, I was going to say exactly what you said, that I think when you talk about, you know, um, you without sin, you know, cast the first stone, is exactly what you say. My interpretation is that it's a judgment of that. And we've talked in here, a sin is a sin is a sin, so it doesn't matter what it is. And as you and I talked before the program, for me, what I realized is it's my ego that makes me judgmental of others because I think I know best and I think what I think is right and everybody else should think what I think is right and everybody else should do what I think they should do. Go ahead. Okay, okay. I, I, I didn't mean to stop you. I, you didn't hear me on the radio stop. But my, if you could see me, I'm going, ah! And by the way, Les, hang on. Les from Ohio, hang on. We're going to talk to you in just a minute. Um, but on the other hand, we also are called to come a- alongside someone, Jesus taught us, a- a- and Matthew lays it out very clearly, um, of what we do when we see someone who's wrong. They're doing something wrong. They're doing something sinful. They're doing something that, that we know if they continue to do it, uh, life's going to be rough and salvation may slip through their fingers. Do you think they don't know? Do you think that they're, the things that they do, they're not, not aware that it's wrong? Um, and it's up to you to tell them that they're right. wrong in their life? Well, yeah, who decided that you were the one that's to point out to everybody that they're doing stuff wrong? But if, if, if we never did that, what would life look like? Well, I don't know. I think people find it out just like we had a situation yesterday in a meeting. Yeah. The person's been coming to the meeting for years and years and years. Now, do you think if you hammered on her every day after the meeting and said, you know what? I know you don't like organized religion, but let me tell you, it's really great and you ought to do it. You know, that would have pushed her away farther. Yeah. And but she, through her own process of keep coming to 12 steps and keep getting the message of God and that kind of thing, she eventually said yesterday, well, my sponsor told me to go where God is. And that's church. Yeah, and she's been coming to church for three or four weeks. Yeah. Wow. So, and, and she made it without you telling her that what she was doing wasn't right by your but eyes. But her sponsor did. Well, because she asked. Because she asked. I think, okay. I think, yeah, I hear the music. All right. Well, no, that's all right. Um, uh, great show today. I want to hear from you. Les is standing by in Ohio. We're going to talk to him after the break. one 244 7 Tolerance. Are you tolerant? What does the Bible speak of tolerance? Because the word tolerance is nowhere in the 66 books of the Bible, even in a Greek translation. But yet we know Jesus was an immensely tolerant man. It's your voice I want to hear live here on Restoring Hope Live. Restoring Hope. Today, millions are struggling with alcohol or drug addiction. If you or people you know struggle with a chemical dependency where a substance owns you and you have other struggles such as depression, anxiety, or trauma that can often go along with it, get your freedom back and successfully transform your life from one controlled by addiction to a clean, sober, fulfilling life. Contact Transformations Treatment Center where our caring professionals will help you find your freedom. Transformations Treatment Center offers both a 12-step and a Christian 12-step program, providing healing for the mind, body, and spirit. At Transformations Treatment Center, we understand the pain. Get your freedom back. Transform your world. Addiction specialists are ready to take your call. Call now, 877-989-5758. That's 877-989-5758. That's 877-989-5758. Here's Dan Celia with today's Stewardship Moment. I had a doctor friend of mine say, I've never heard you speak about stewardship of our health. If we are going to be servants of the Lord, we need to take care of ourselves. 1 Corinthians 6.19 says, Do you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have received from God? You are not your own. 
well, in that context of 1 Corinthians, I'm not sure the Lord was speaking about the stewardship of our body or our health, but he does say we have received it from God and it's not our own. Our health should certainly be a part of healthy stewardship. You've just heard a stewardship moment with Dan Celia of the Regency Foundation, helping you plan, give, and invest wisely. Call them at 877-4-PLAN-WISE or log on to regencyfoundation.org. That's regencyfoundation.org. Good things come in threes. You meet your soulmate, you get married, you have your first child together. Good things do come in threes. And Take Shape for Life is no exception. Your free personal health coach, a professional weight loss coach, the MetaFast 5-in-1 plan for healthy weight loss, and the Habits of Health system for a lifetime of good health are three of the best gifts you can give yourself. Together, they lead to the healthy weight control that helps you take shape for life. Lose weight safely and quickly with the MetaFast 5-in-1 plan. Featuring medically formulated, nutritious, and delicious meal replacements by Metafast. You'll choose five Metafast meals each day, one every two to three hours. Because you eat frequently, you're never hungry, and your metabolism stays revved. Many of the Metafast meals are portable, so you can fit this diet into even the busiest lifestyle. You also get one lean and green meal to eat at the time that works best for you. For the lean, you'll have lean protein. The green is servings of low glycemic vegetables. Depending on your source of protein, you'll get some healthy fat too, and that'll help keep you full and satisfied. While MetaFast meals are delicious and nutritionally sound, don't think you'll be committed to meal replacements forever. The 5-in-1 plan is just the first phase of our program. In the transition phase, you'll begin to add more fruits, vegetables, and protein. And on maintenance, you're ready. Optimal health is yours. To speak to a personal health coach, go to RestoringHopeLive.com and click on the Take Shape for Life tab. Then, let us know about your healthy new lifestyle and how good you look and feel. And thanks for listening to Restoring Hope Live. That's RestoringHopeLive.com. All across America, there are countless numbers of people struggling with addiction and other life-controlling issues. Probably someone you know and love. There is a way out. There is hope. Transformations Treatment Center in Delray Beach, Florida, has a unique approach to substance abuse treatment. Call now and ask about our guaranteed success program, Transformations. Change your life. Change your relationships. Transform your world. Learn more now at RestoringHopeLive.com Restoring Hope Open my heart to sing Taking the darkness inside Revealing your light Restoring Hope Welcome back. This is RestoringHopeLive.com We invite you to go to our website. It's a simple website. We don't uh, monetize it. There's not a lot of commercials. It's a place where you can learn a little bit about us and then you can listen to or watch all of our previous shows. They're all there. Uh, there's also a way for you to contact us through that and I'd, I'd love to hear from you. Alright, we're talking about tolerance today and as Christians, uh, what are we to be tolerant of? The word tolerance and its Greek definition or its Greek sub-meaning is nowhere in the Bible. The word tolerance does not exist in the Bible. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not supposed to be tolerant. It doesn't, also doesn't talk about texting while driving, but we don't do that. But tolerance, it, it, one of my favorite sayings is tolerance is a man with no convictions. And sometimes I think that's right, that I shouldn't be tolerant. I shouldn't be accepting. I shouldn't be acceptable to some of the things that go on in my life or society. And then Jesus comes along and always gives us the example of patience and tolerance. Let's go to the phones. We've got a couple calls. Let's first go to Les in Ohio. Les, you're live on RestoringHopeLive.com. How you doing today, Les? God bless. All right, brother. How you doing? I'm good. Thanks for hanging on, buddy. Tell me about your story. All right. Um, I'm a recovering alcoholic. I've been sober since uh, – actually, I'm a recovering alcoholic and an addict. I've been sober since May 8th of 2005 Congratulations. congratulations good job i appreciate it you know and um I, was, I listen to your program after church i go to church on sunday and i live about 15 miles north of columbus ohio and i go to church to a little tiny church about 30 miles from where i live so it gives me time to uh, listen to a couple programs on the way home and i really appreciate you guys' program but i, I was listening uh, to a couple of the programs just talking about jesus christ in, in AA, you know, and um, when I went into uh, AA of uh, May 8th of 2005, I was so sick. I was shutting down. I mean, I just couldn't, 
couldn't process no more. Sick and tired of being sick and tired. Oh, man. Believe me, you can get there. But, um, you know, um, I went to uh, AA, and um, about a week or two went by, you know, and they kept saying, you got to pick your sobriety date. And I drank and drugs since I was 12 years old. And I come from a very large family. My mom and dad have 16 kids. Wow. And um, three died at birth, so I left 13 of us. Mm. And I and I am the oldest male. And uh, my father passed away. My mother was a Christian woman. I was all taught about um, Jesus Christ growing up, you know. And I've heard more sayings about Jesus Christ from my mother growing up than John Hagee could ever ever say, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, I was in John Hagee ministry a couple, uh, two or three years after I come out of uh, AA, but um, but I went, you know, my mom had me on a straight path. I'm just, I just took a right hand down the fork, and I went down the wrong path. Now, technically, in man's eyes, I should be dead. You know, I've had three very severe car accidents growing up. I mean, even made the paper a couple times. Do you believe this kid lived? Mm. And um, I've been left for dead back in the park. OD'd on drugs once and left me for dead. Well, we're sure uh, we're, we're sure happy that God had a purpose for your life lesson and, and uh, something to do. C- can you can you share with us uh, your your level of tolerance for others now that you've been sober for oh my heavens almost ten years? Yeah, you know I try to stay as close to the Lord as possible. I, I do a lot more church. I do AA now, but. Uh, that May 8th of 2005, I was real close to my mom. My mom passed away during the blizzard of 78. And I held my dad's hand. My dad died of alcoholism about five years after my mom passed away. And I picked that sobriety date, and I didn't know until like two weeks after it was an AA in May 8th, 2005, that that was Mother's Day. Oh, wow. And, uh, and I didn't know until like a year later, I was sitting in my house, and the phone rang. <laughs> And uh, my wife answers the phone. She goes, your sister-in-law's on the phone. Are you going to wish your uh, brother Ed happy birthday? I said, when's his birthday? She said, well, Diane said it's May 8th. Mm. So that's that's two eighths. And my oldest sister passed away down in Kentucky. She was a black belt Christian. And I didn't know until after I found out that May 8th of 2008 was my brother's birthday, that my uh, sobriety day is Mother's Day of May 8th. I didn't find out until later on that my oldest sister had just passed away while I was talking to my family about it. It's why well, everybody in the family don't tell you everything because your sister Joanne's birthday is May 8th. Oh, my. You pay attention to May 8th. A question real quick, and then I've got to uh, go talk to Billy. What do you mean by a black belt Christian? Well, she uh, went to church four days a week. She's real close to the Lord. I mean, she was just, she talked it, walked it. That's all she done for years, you know. Black belt. I like that black belt, Christian. Hey, Les, thank you very much for uh, calling us. Uh, God bless you. Let's go to Billy now in Albany, New York. Uh, Billy, what do you know about tolerance? I'll tell you, uh, I'm a recovered alcoholic, thanks to the Lord. And that happened on the day before Christmas Eve in uh, 2009. Mm. And... uh, it came to me through a, a, a righteous beating. Yeah, it was quite, uh, I got awakened by uh, the hand of God, literally. And uh, before that, I've, I didn't have the kind of experiences that the last show, I mean, I was living the party and there wasn't any real problem other than the fact that I was the problem. Yeah. But I'll make it brief. My thoughts on tolerance speaks clearly of it in the Bible. Love the sinner, hate the sin. It's not about the way we can tell them not to sin. It's about the way we live. And if we live right, then they'll see that. And if they see that, they'll follow us just the way they followed him. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Billy, I appreciate you listening, buddy. Thanks. You call in again, and God bless you for your sobriety. You're just about uh, five months ahead of me, brother, so uh, you keep it going. Keep that uh, plug in the jug. Um, Black belt Christian, I like that. I like that term. I'm not going to think about that. (laughs) <laughs> now, uh, Billy used a, a common phrase, uh, love the sinner, hate the sin. 
uh, and that is something that we conclude uh, from the Bible. It doesn't actually right. say that anywhere yeah. in the well, Bible. I mean, Jesus said, um, you know, uh, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord yeah. with all your heart, mind, strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. As yourself. So love is that new commandment that Jesus, you know, uh, well, the commandment that Jesus said, love one another. He says, a new commandment I give you, love one another. So he's consistent with the Father and, you know, what was in the commandments. And so with that, you, you know, you make that assumption that we need to love everyone despite the sin that they're doing. So, so I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. What then I hear you saying that along with love comes, um, <laughs> I mean, is it unconditional tolerance? Well, I'm looking at a definition here. I just found it on the web for, for tolerance. Let's say it says it, it's in particular the ability or willingness, uh, uh, and, and it's to tolerate something, in particular, the existence of opinions or behaviors that do, do not necessarily uh, you agree with. Okay. Okay, so if you don't like somebody's behavior, are you going to condemn them or are you going to tolerate it and show love? I guess that's what the, the question is. Well, but, but if, if you're my, if you're my uh, workmate, when you are, uh, and, and well, uh, let's turn this around. If I did something every time we were together, that rubbed you the, the wrong way, because I'm certain I've never done that in five or six years. Right. But wouldn't eventually you say to me, you know, I mean, if I only saw you once a year, Mac, or if I only saw you an hour a week, I'd, I'd tolerate it. But every single day, I just need to share with you that that's just, that really rubs me the wrong way. And, and I don't think it's biblical, or I think it's mean, or it... it, it... Well, I think it, it depends on how I say it. For instance, if I say, you know, Mac, you're a jerk, and what you did there was really dumb, or if I come at you and say, you know, Mac, first of all, I want you to know I love you, brother. I really do. And this thing that I see, you know, is, is something that may affect you in a, in, a, in a negative way. And I want to protect you, and I care about you, and I'm just going to bring this up just so that you're, you're aware of it. Now, whether you do anything about it is fine. You know, I don't care. I just want you to know that, in my opinion, it looks like this. And if I kept doing it, what would you do? Nothing. You wouldn't quit? No. No? At some point? No. See, I'm still with you after five years. Are you All... telling me I've done things that you're intolerant of? Oh, my goodness. No. Oh, my. No. Okay. <laughs> Mary, what do you think about that? Well, I mean, I think he's right. I think his approach is good. You know, I think when you are working with somebody, you have an ongoing relationship with somebody, that it's okay to have those kinds of conversations. I think sometimes the intolerance that I guess I'm referring to is when people are judged you know, for what they do or how they act. And, you know, I had somebody say to me, and it, it just rang, you know, I, I had an opinion about something. And the person said to me, why do you have an opinion about that? It's not your business. It doesn't involve you, you know? And I it just, and that is what honestly has changed me to become a more tolerant and less judgmental person. We're going to talk about tolerance when we come back as Christians. Should we be tolerant? of some of the things that are going on in society that clearly aren't biblical. That's coming up next live on Restoring Hope. Restoring Hope. All across America, there are countless numbers of people struggling with addiction and other life controlling issues. Probably someone you know and love. There is a way out. There is hope. Transformations Treatment Center in Delray Beach, Florida has a unique approach to substance abuse treatment. Call now and ask about our guaranteed success program, Transformations. Change your life, change your relationships, transform your world. Learn more now at RestoringHopeLive.com. The Pocket Testament League presents Pocket Power. Read, carry, and share the gospel every day. Tongue-tied when it comes to witnessing? Then let God's Word do the talking for you. My local youth group will feed and hang out with the homeless downtown. Such a cosmopolitan city is a huge meeting place for people of all walks of life. And having access to God's Word would be a huge help. The truth has to be shared. Hello, this is Mike Brickley, president of the Pocket Testament League. Reading the Bible every day is so easy when you always have it with you. You won't even need a backpack. You can carry one right in your pocket. What are you waiting for? Our Women's Fellowship has sponsored a car wash to raise money, but we also want to use this opportunity to share the gospel. That will be our thank you. Praise the Lord for having these testaments available. 
What are you waiting for? Read, carry, and share the gospel every day. For more information, call 1-800-636-8785 or visit pocketpower.org. That's pocketpower.org. So, you know, I'm a dog and I'm kind of new to this family, but I've noticed a trend. My humans do this thing where they go around and get all my toys and hide them in this basket, but it's always the same basket and it's always the same place. And then they act so surprised when I find them, but I'm like, hello, that's where you put it last time. Humans are the worst at hide and go seek. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. Here's Dan Celia with today's Stewardship Moment. I had a doctor friend of mine say, I've never heard you speak about stewardship of our health. If we are going to be servants of the Lord, we need to take care of ourselves. 1 Corinthians 6.19 says, Do you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have received from God? You are not your own. Well, in that context of 1 Corinthians, I'm not sure the Lord was speaking about the stewardship of our body or our health, but he does say we have received it from God and it's not our own. Our health should certainly be a part of healthy stewardship. You've just heard a stewardship moment with Dan Celia of the Regency Foundation, helping you plan, give, and invest wisely. Call them at 877-4-PLAN-WISE or log on to regencyfoundation.org. That's regencyfoundation.org. Today, millions are struggling with alcohol or drug addiction. If you or people you know struggle with a chemical dependency where a substance owns you and you have other struggles such as depression, anxiety, or trauma that can often go along with it, get your freedom back and successfully transform your life from one controlled by addiction to a clean, sober, fulfilling life. Contact Transformations Treatment Center where our caring professionals will help you find your freedom. Transformations Treatment Center offers both a 12-step and a Christian 12-step program providing healing for the mind, body, and spirit. At Transformations Treatment Center, we understand the pain. Get your freedom back. Transform your world. Addiction specialists are ready to take your call. Call now, 877-989-5758. That's 877-989-5758. That's 877-989-5758. Restoring hope. Open my heart to see. Darkness inside, revealing your light, restoring hope. 1 855 244 0077. That's 1 855 244 0077. Go to restoringhopelive.com. Numbers right there. You'll know the number to call in. We're talking about tolerance. And as a Christian, I want to know what you're intolerant of. What are you intolerant of? Let, let, let's just say for a minute this word intolerant is not a bad word. Because the people who use that word are people that disagree with you. Oh, well, you're intolerant of my beliefs. You're intolerant of my lifestyle. You're intolerant of my habit, hurt, or hang up. You're just intolerant of me, which then translates to I'm unlovable. Do you get that? I'm going to say that again. When someone says to you in an angry or hurt voice, well, you're just intolerant of me. What they are hearing is I'm unlovable. Or I'm being judged. Or I'm being judged. But even if it's, even if it's, uh, Eric, phone's ringing. Even if it's um, judgment, it still sends the message that I am unlovable. You know, one of the gifts that God gave me is I don't get offended. It's yeah. a choice I made. Right. And, and I think it's also I'm unlovable and I'm not good enough. One right. more time, I'm not enough. And you will hear around the rooms of 12 Steps over and over again, part of the reason we drink is because we don't feel like we're enough. And that was right. certainly the case for me. I didn't think I was pretty enough. I didn't think I was smart enough. I didn't think I was funny enough. And you know, we've talked about that in here before. And But I thought when I took a drink of alcohol that it made me all of those. But for me, because I'm an alcoholic, 
it made me, you know, the opposite of all of those when I drank. So, but that's a lot of the reason why people um, drink. It's because yeah. they don't think they measure up. They don't think that's they're right. enough. They're trying to fi- fill those holes inside. Yeah. That's right. And it still comes down to you don't feel loved. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So and if it's you as... are to love one another, mm-hmm. then yeah. that's a big part of the pro- of the answer is yeah. to love. I mean, God is love. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I'm sorry that there are people because of different denominations or different churches or, you know, most people don't have a problem with God or Jesus. They have the problem with people who represent them and the churches that those people represent. Uh, God only loves you. Do you are, if you're listening to this program, do you understand that? God does not tell you you're not pretty. God tells you you are beautiful. You are the most magnificent, most beautiful creature that I have ever created. God doesn't tell you that you're unlovable. God says, I love you unconditionally. That's how lovable you are. There is no condition in which I would look at you and say, I love you a little less. Do you know that? one 855 7 Let's go to the phones uh, down to the panhandle state of Florida where Greg is standing by. Greg has 32 years sobriety. Congratulations, hey, Greg. Greg. Talk to hey. me about tolerance, buddy. Good job, hey, buddy. How are you? Good. 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 Happy Sunday. Same to you. Uh, listen, to, I've never listened to the show. I'm just driving between Jacksonville and where I live, and uh, and uh, it was just awesome. So uh, tolerance is a great, great word, uh, and I'm learning a lot from what you guys are saying. But I am. What I will share with you is the less fear I have, the more tolerant I am. The uh, less fear I have. The more tolerant you are, okay. Yes, I am. I have found uh, as I keep working through the steps, and I'm, you know, been doing a lot of work on the seventh step, six, seven, and uh, going back into the eight on some things, and nine. That uh, in looking at these character defects, a lot of the reasons that I have character defects is because I have fear. When I have fear, I use worldly things to comfort myself. Worldly things such as alcohol, could be food, could be pornography, could be whatever it is, okay? But using these things uh, and uh, these worldly things to help comfort myself, because I have fear, I created the habits that I have, and I put myself in my own bag of stuff. Now, how do I get rid of fear? I get rid of fear with faith. And when I have faith in my life and the fear lessons, I'm a lot more tolerant of everything because I don't have to be in control anymore. I don't have to be judgmental anymore. I don't have to be uh, the one on point anymore, but I can try to understand instead of be understood. I don't have to be like it says in the, uh, in the other uh, book, the big book, not the Bible, not the big, big book, but the big book. I don't have to be the director. And when that happens, and that's fearful. But the reason I want to be the director is because I'm full of fear. When I let go of that and I step forward in faith, I find that my tolerance level increases exponentially. So that's what I got to say. I hope yeah. you guys have a great day. Hey, Greg, do me a favor and email me. I'd like to keep in touch with you. Uh, what's your email? Uh, it's, go to restoringhopelive.com and just do a contact. Okay. All thanks. Right. Thanks for sharing, yeah. Greg, and congratulations on your 32 years. Keep on keeping on. Yeah. Good okay. job, Greg. One, one day at a time. Absolutely. Yep. And 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 Greg said one of the most important uh, questions that was ever posed to me, and it, it's one question that really changed my perception of life. And I ask people this, okay? And I, I'll ask all of you in the in the studio this: Do you wish to be understood, or do you wish to understand? And when you get that answer back from somebody, like uh, I, I, uh, a relationship that I have, uh, an important one, I asked that question once, and the person's answer was, I wish to be understood. So that told me to shut up and listen. Well, I think it teaches us in 12 Steps that, for one thing, that we should want to understand than to be understood you know that is giving of oneself and just like he said and i believe he was talking about the spiritual malady you know when we're full of fear we don't have faith and 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 our spiritual malady is anything our brokenness that keeps us from a relationship with our higher power and um, where that selfishness and self-centeredness comes in because it's all about me 
Honestly, what I had to learn after coming to 12 Steps was that when I think I'm not pretty, I'm not smart, and I'm not funny, that's still selfish, self-centered, because mm-hmm. it's still all about me, that I'm not enough. You know, instead of trusting exactly what you said, that God made me enough, absolutely as I am. But I didn't know that because I didn't have the relationship with God that I needed right. to have to understand that I am absolutely lovable. Yeah, and for those of you uh, who don't think or who have a challenge with the 12-step program because you don't think it's Christ-centered enough, trust me, it is so filled with God. Uh, And, you know, you shared the story a bit ago about a young lady in our meeting sober, I don't know. She's like 17 years, I think. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and finally she was at a point where she was searching for something, and her sponsor said, just go to to church. Well, the sponsor said, go where you can hear God. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, and and she said in the the meeting, I haven't wanted organized religion. I'm not not interested in organized religion. I don't want anything to do with it. And she said, and I was struggling, and my sponsor said, you need to go where you can hear God. And she said... And that has been church for me. And so once again, I say, how can we deny that God, Christ, uses 12 steps to get to open the door yeah. to get people to have a relationship with him? Yeah. I and, hear it all the time. And, and you know, if I had a, you know, my mission uh, for this show is to help family members and loved ones understand how people who suffer from life's hurts, habits, and hangups can be helped. Right. And I just say to to the people um, that are intolerant of 12 steps because they get to choose God as they understand him, you got to trust your God. Yeah. You got to trust your Christ, whoever your God is. You got to trust that they're going to get there if they're supposed to go there. I mean, honestly, I say to you, it is to me, it is the deepest way of faith because I'm I don't know how it's supposed to go. Right. I'm not God. Right. And that I'm really trusting and saying, I'm going to trust that if they're to have the relationship, these 12 steps are going to lead them there because the 12 steps open the door to have a relationship for the first time in their life. Right. So if we really trust, yep. we got to trust that that's the way they're going to get there. That's a powerful point. you got to trust your God. one 855 7 Let's go to Canada where Mitchell is standing by. Canada, or uh, Mitchell, how are you doing today, buddy? I am doing great. Talk to me about uh, uh, tolerance. Okay. Uh, first, I'd just like to share a little bit. Uh, I was delivered from, I uh, was both alcoholic and drug addict. Uh, pretty hard stuff. And uh, in 89, wow. basically for me, I just had a deliverance. I, I couldn't explain it any other way. Uh, God healed me, and uh, I've been sober since. Good job. I haven't had to walk back in, in any way, shape, or form or struggle. So I wanted to share that with, uh, because, you know, 12 steps and recovering alcoholism and, and all that stuff. And I just wanted to share that a little bit for hope for the people there, because I don't hope there, right, for, uh, you know, anybody. And, and I do believe in the 12 steps. It's, a, it's a, another step forward to, to uh, you know, healing your life and, and becoming stronger. And uh, with tolerance, I've found over the years, uh, I am a, very much a Christian. I have been for a long time. Uh, ever since that day, though, that was, uh, I was always, I actually grew up a Christian, but that particular day, uh, I made some more commitments to God. And uh, one of the things I found that with tolerance, I believe uh, your own c- uh, convictions that you deal with in your life, and as you struggle with those, and it also helps you to understand tolerance better and to be able to tolerate people. And uh, in certain situations, because if you really look deep into your heart and uh, start to examine it, and even now, after all these years of being a Christian and and a faithful follower, uh, you know, I have convictions every day in my life that I struggle with, and it helps me to understand that I need to be tolerant of people uh, around me and, you know, to be able to reach out and help them. And I think if you can help them and... uh, you know, uh, bless them in any way. I think that's the basis for being a Christian and, uh, you know, a follower of Jesus. That's what he done. And uh, without judging, and we, if you don't judge, then you're going to have that tolerance. Well, Mitchell, I couldn't have said it any better. And for uh, my friend up north there, thank you very much. God bless. Congratulations on I added that up. Was that 25? 25 years yeah. sobriety, right? Basically, yeah, 25. Great that job. Awesome. Good Great job, job, Mitchell. Thanks, Thanks for, for calling. calling. In. All right, let's go to Pennsylvania where Chip is standing by. He's got the million dollar question, guys. Chip's got the million dollar question. 
Where do you draw the line in tolerance? Chip, go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering. I, first of all, I've, I've been a Christian most of my life, but I, I, I became a drinker, and I quit drinking in 19, uh, February 14, 1999. was my last drink. Good for uh, you. Wonderful. Uh, or Valentine's Day, I believe it was. But where do you drink? And, I, and I'm a truck driver. I live in my truck with my dog. I don't ever get to go to meetings. But I, if I don't read my Bible every day, I'm telling you, Every day, if I if I just miss one day, I, I get angry. I, I'm not kidding you. I cannot. Yeah. If I I read Proverbs every day, and I and I uh, I, I, I read the Bible. I'm, this year, I'm reading it uh, each chapter through 50 times. I've wow. Took years to do that. And wow. I, I started in uh, Roman. Wow. But, uh, where do you where do you draw the line in tolerance? Because I still. When I see somebody doing something stupid, like if there's a bunch of kids with their parents in a restaurant and this guy's over there cussing like a trooper, you, you got to stand up and tell him to shut his mouth. Or I, I don't know how to. That's how I would do it. I mean, you know. Well, he, Harold. Discipline him when he was a kid. You know, his dad didn't do it. So yeah. I'm 62. I'll try. And, and Chip, I, hang on for just a second, Chip, because I think this is a really important question. And I think, Bob, you kind of answered it. Because I'm, I'm like Chip. If I see a dad or a mom, and I'm talking really out of line, because we, we, you know, we've all been around little kids, nieces, nephews, our own kids, our grandkids, whatever they are, and they just do the stupidest thing sometimes. And you do have that parental feeling that I need to correct them. But I think, Bob, you gave the answer, and that's you've got to do it in love. Right. You got to, you know, Chip, I think I'd walk up to that guy and I'd probably sit down next to him and I'd say, man, isn't isn't parenting tough? I remember those days, you know, I, I, my nieces and nephews or my kids. And, and I just want no, you to I'm know. Talking about, I'm, I talk, I'm talking about a guy in there by himself or, or with another guy cussing in front of a family. Oh, oh. yeah. And it's still the approach. It's still the about. approach. Yeah, it, uh, you're, you're right, Chip. And it's still the approach. And I, and also, you know, here's my little trick. My little prayer before every radio show I do is, God, your words through me. God, your words through me. So as you're walking over to those guys that are being totally disrespectful to the families in the restaurant, just say to yourself, God, your wa- words through me. Send the Holy Spirit to me now. And help to temper my words and be tolerant. But, Chip, I, I, I think you are a bold Christian and a good man to go to another man and say, dude, your, your language among the kids, please, please. I, I think that's one of the things God made you for. You travel this country and you see things all over this land. And God wants you to bring that message. And it isn't just stand up and preach Matthew 28. It's also sometimes to come alongside other men and women and say, hey, your, your actions are not that of Christians, of Christ, or even acceptable among little kids. And I think what Max said and what Bob has said, it's doing it in love. I believe that would be the Christian way rather than doing it in anger, you know, and um, just going over. I think, yeah, I think that makes a yeah. total sense. All right, Chip. Uh, thanks for I'll listening, have to man. Try that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. I appreciate it very much. God bless you and have a great show. Yeah, yeah you, you too. too. Be safe. Stay in touch, Bye. man. Stay in touch. Bye. Bye. All right. Um, you know, Chip speaks to my heart. Sure. You know, he, we're all different. We're all uh, wired different. I'm gonna uh, when we're done here, uh, my small group is gonna go to the movie God Isn't Dead uh, at our at our theater, and I'm gonna have some Yahoo. I call them Joe Bidens who's going to sit four <laughs> rows behind me, and all he's going to do is talk to somebody the whole way. And it's loud enough that it's going to irritate the heck out of me. And I always just want to stand, well, and I have, I'm sorry. I am that guy in the theater <laughs> that will turn around, look at you, and go, shh. And I almost pray that they go, oh, mind your own business, because then they've just opened up the gate. But I've learned in love, and... Uh, now what I'm more likely to do is probably to go up to that person after the movie and after we're leaving and just say, hey, I didn't want to interrupt you during the movie, but just know you, you kind of messed up my movie experience today. I didn't come to hear you. I came to hear the movie. So uh, next time you're in a movie, would you just remember there's a guy like me who probably isn't saying anything, but you're really 
hurting the experience. That's certainly a nicer way to, to yeah, do it. Yeah, that, that's what I do now. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, I don't want to get shot like that guy in the theater. Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought of, too. Yeah, wherever that was. And I want to go back to what Greg from Florida was saying about beer. I liked him. Yeah. He sounded like a sharp yeah. guy. Yeah. Chip or... <laughs> Well, I liked everybody. Yeah, today, everybody but I, calling Greg. Me. I really enjoyed Greg. But Greg was talking about fear, and it immediately made me think of First uh, John four eighteen. Uh, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. That's the first thing that came to my mind when he was talking about that fear, and so that's where love comes in again. Yeah. Perfect love casts out fear. And and the next step I think to that when we talk about tolerance is relationship. You know, if I've learned anything, I, I, I really need to uh, acquire or create a relationship with somebody that may take four or five times or something before I'm really, I really have their trust to come alongside me and tell me something. Mm -hmm. I mean, I need people in my life to do that. I'm, I, am a, I am a much better person today because of the brothers and sisters that I've surrounded myself with at work and at home and at church and in meetings, because I give those people permission. You probably all, I've all, I know I've told all of you this at one time or another, you have permission to tell me when I'm out of bounds. I need to hear that. But that's because we have a relationship. Well, see, and that's what, I mean, I have some people in my life that I expect that from. I call them. You know, I had a situation this week one day where I called a gal, a friend of mine, who's um, sort of my sponsor. I've known her for 25 years. Um, she's 35 years sober. And I called her. And for an hour on the phone, she just let me spew mm. crap, <laughs> to be honest. Well, I was in a right. really bad place. Yeah. And she just let me say what I needed to say. And I was mad about some things. And I was upset about some things. And she let me process that. And she was able to give me feedback during that as well. You know, I woke up on Wednesday morning and it was a new day. Yeah. Okay. And that's, you know, there are people that I trust that I respect, you know, and, and again, the big gift for me has been that it's not my place to come up to you and tell you, uh, you know, you've given me permission, so I may do that, but just somebody else in the meeting, it's not my place to go up to them after the meeting and go, you know what, you just really suck well, now, <laughs> or now, whatever. Now, hold on, hold on. I want to challenge that for a minute. Oh, hey, you know what? You really suck. I agree. That's yeah. not the language. Yeah. But here we are. We're all in a 12-step program. Right. And we're all in this meeting, mm -hmm. okay? And you've got 31 years sobriety. Right. And you've got a girl over there, uh, not a man. Right. I, I would disagree yeah. with right, a man. Right. But mm -hmm. you've got a young lady who you don't know. She just comes to the meetings. Right. She's only six, seven, eight, nine, ten months sober, maybe a couple of years. And she's just, she's jacking around the wrong way. Don't you think you have a responsibility to gently come up in love and say, hey, the way you talk about your mother or the way you talk about your father, um, uh, I, I'd ask that you tone it down a little. I know you're angry, but man. There was a time that I would have thought that was my place. But today what I know is that unless she asks me, it's not really my place. I have to allow her the dignity of her own experience. I have to trust that she's got a circle of people like me okay, that she's talking to that are telling her different, okay? I'm not self-appointed 12-step police that I have to go up and tell people. If she asks me, I'll gladly tell her. And, and you know what? That reminds me of something else. By the way, one 244 0077 <laughs> Put it in your phones. Put it in your database. It's on our website at RestoringHopeLive.com. Those phone lines are always open during our shows unless, like right now, they're just completely packed. So we'd love to hear from you, though. When I, was, when I was calling out to the Lord uh, in a journey that I was on that was this, is it my job to defend the gospel or simply, simply to proclaim it? Because as a 30-year uh, uh, um, political talk show host in my hometown, uh, it was my job to call it out, and it was my job to defend it, and it was my job to do anything I wanted to do. But when I got sober and I really created that relationship with Christ— then I thought, well, maybe, it, maybe it's not my job anymore. So I go to some pastors, and one of my pastors said this, and I, this is a great answer. He said, Mac, he said, we all play different roles. Mary, you just talked about your role a minute ago. We all play different roles in the kingdom of God. He said, if my role, no, not if, he said, my role is to be here like, like the shepherd and embrace the lost sheep and hold them and let them cry and to let them know that they are completely safe in my arms. But if somebody's not on the front line saying, hey, that's wrong, that's not biblical, that's sinful, your lifestyle is sinful, 
uh, if if somebody's down on the front line saying you're a drunk and you got to cut it out because you're messing up your kids and your wife and your life, he said, if there's not somebody on the front lines doing that, then there's no need for me in the back. He said, by the time those people get to me, they've heard all the sin, they've heard all the condemnation. Now I get to love on them. So, you know, m- maybe my role is a, is one to learn, Bob, in love and tolerance, to come alongside somebody and through the Holy Spirit say the right thing. Uh, right? You know, again, I believe if you truly in your heart know and you're getting the messages that that is your job, again, it. but I believe it has to be in total love, lack of judgment, lack of intolerance, total loving kindness. You know, you and I talked about a situation, we're not going to go into detail here yesterday, uh, that we both saw where I felt it necessary to ask somebody to speak to someone because right. um, there was a possible that somebody could be injured. Yeah. And in that case, it had to be done. Yeah. And I did speak up to try to protect somebody. Yeah. And, and, and you, this is important, Mary. So you felt it was your job to go to someone mm-hmm. who had the authority and the relationship with that person to tell them that. Exactly. But see, that's excellent, though. Because what they were doing, they could really injure somebody. And that person needed to be shut down. Yeah, emotionally uh, yes, injured. Yes, yes, yes. But see, but that's a great way to end this program. So in other words, you do have some intolerance. You just know, we all have intolerance, but you just knew where to go with that. And I wouldn't consider even what I did is intolerant. I guess that's another program for another subject. And what the person did was really wrong. It, it could injure somebody. So I don't know that that's intolerance, but the person right. didn't know what they were doing or didn't understand what they were doing could injure someone emotionally, and they needed to be taught that. And I yeah. wasn't the person to do the teaching. Right. But. but see, that's awesome. I mean, isn't that, isn't that the package with the bow? Isn't that what Christ teaches us? To use the people that we have around us, that he brought to us? I mean, you and I are friends, uh, Mary. You and I are friends, Bob. All of us in the studio are friends because Christ brought us together. There's no coincidence. And so he uses those people that Christ brings around us us, to help comfort, love, be tolerant of, and help Mm -hmm. assist with life's helps. Hurts, or life's hurts, habits, and hang-ups. All right. Thanks for all your calls today. We love you. Uh, contact us at RestoringHopeLive.com. We'll see you next week live here on Restoring Hope Live. Have a great day. And- Restoring-